Hi everyone and welcome back to our 12 days of Christmas series. This is the second day and today we're going to have Illustrator do math for us. Now let me show you what I mean. So we're going to create a snowflake. So first I'm going to choose the ellipse tool and I'm going to create a circle with just a white stroke. Fill is set to none. Now I'd like to have our elements go around the circle with an equal distance. Now I could take the calculator and then I could calculate things and then punch that into the angle with our rotate tool. But that's way too much work. I think Illustrator should do the work for us. So first we're going to create a line. And since we already want some elements for our snowflake, I'm going to choose the rectangle tool, hold the shift key to create a square. Then I use the free transform tool, rotate it by 45 degrees. Then with the scissor tool, the shortcut for this is C, or if you go here into the toolbar, you can choose it. It's underneath the eraser tool. I'm going to click on each side. With the direct selection tool, I'll delete the top part. Now this is going to be the top of our snowflake element. I'm going to drag a copy down to the bottom and increase it slightly. Because I'm lazy, I'm using the blend tool to fill in another part. Now I would like to make copies around the circle. So let's select it, group it, and then we're going to choose the rotate tool. And then I'm pressing the optional key on the keyboard, and then I'm pressing on the bottom of our anchor point. So I click once, and I'm going to get the rotate pop-up panel. Now in here I can set the ankle, and then I can use the preview, and then press copy, and then duplicate everything. But what if I want to have nine of those elements evenly distributed around our circle? This is where now Illustrator can calculate for us. Now here in the field for the angle, we're going to type 360, and then instead of us calculating what kind of angle we need, all we have to do in this case is press the forward slash. This means that we're going to divide the 360, and then I'm adding a 9. Now Illustrator will exactly know what to do, and will give us the angle that we need. So let's press the preview button, and as you can see, it is 40 degrees. After that, we're pressing copy, and then do not deselect the shape, we're going to use the duplicate shortcut. So I'm pressing Command or Control on the keyboard and D, and then I'm repeating that until I have all of my shapes. Now just because it was so beautiful, let's have Illustrator do more math for us. I would like to have the circle here repeated in the front, but I don't really know what size it is, and I'm too lazy to open up the Transform tool to see the number. So all I have to do is select it with the Selection tool, then I'm going to choose the ellipse tool. I press once on the keyboard. It will have remembered the circle that we've just selected, how big it is. And as you can see, it's 136 points in width and height. Now I would like to have a circle a third of this size. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to add the forward slash. We're going to type three. And then we're going to repeat this with the height. And now we're having a circle a third of the original one that we selected. Now if I press OK, I'm going to get the circle that is exactly a third of the circle that we've previously selected. Now of course it also works with multiplying. So let me just show you. I'll select a small circle. I'll choose the ellipse tool. Now I would like to have it twice the size. So instead of adding the forward slash for divide, we're going to add the star for multiply. And we can also select the constraint width and height proportions. So I'll add the star and the number two. And as you can see, it already calculated the height for us. And then we just press OK. Now I have a circle twice the size of the small circle in our middle. And I'm going to add it to our snowflake. Now I can select the small circle and switch the stroke to the fill. And then I can build up my elements of my snowflake. And this is how we can use Illustrator to do your calculations. It works particularly well with the rotate tool. And if you have shapes that you would like to shrink down by 50%, or by a third, or by a fourth, and so on. Now this is it, again, if you liked it, please leave a comment below, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel here. And at the same time, don't forget to head over to vectortwist.com and check out more tutorials and articles on the blog. And I'll see you tomorrow with our next tip, so stay tuned.